I've given you these questions as I always do to try and warm up your brains for things that will be relevant for this lesson. So you may, able, may be able to fill this in. I always like to give spoiler free headings. I hate, I don't know if anyone's like a Marvel movie fan, but like I really wanted to enjoy Spider-Man No Way Home with no spoilers and it's very difficult and it made a big difference to my experience in the movie. So that's why I've left that blank, but you'll probably be able to guess based on what we're looking at here. Let's start with one and two. We've got this log base E of 20. Now, Quick question for you, right? You've got an answer here, 2.996. By the way, some agreement? You happy with that? Yeah. Thumbs up, okay. Now remember, what does it mean? What is the significance of this number? The idea is, logs tell you what power should you raise to, to get a certain result, right? From a certain base, remember this is like 2.7 or so, what power do you raise that to, to get to 20? That's all this is asking, right? So this is like 2.996. So this is something like three raised to a power a little bit less than three. So we know that three cubed is, it's 27. So you can see, even though it's actually quite close to three, that teeny little bit of difference makes quite a bit of a, a gap to this number over here. But we know we're in the ballpark. Does that make sense? Okay, now having a question two, and I saw, um, Daniel, was it you who put the answer up? Yeah? Um, it's the same. What's going on here? There's actually a log law that I'm trying to get you to remember by seeing these numbers. Can anyone state the law for me? What do you reckon? I know, Daniel, you know it because you put them up. Does someone else know? Does someone, you can even see it from the board. Any suggestions? Yeah, go ahead. Log A plus log B equals log A. Log... A plus log B equals, say it again, log AB. Log A, so it's this weird thing where when you, for example, add logs together, effectively what you're doing is you're multiplying those two things in the log. So that's why 4 times 5 gives you 20, same deal. Does that make sense? So in fact, if you knew your log laws, as soon as you got this, you, you realized you had that as well. Okay. All right, I'm quite happy with three and four. I just gave some exact ones in there for you so it wasn't all just calculated work. I want you to think about the meanings of these logs, not just be able to punch buttons, okay? Now just have a look at this last one for me. Again, there's a log law hiding underneath here that I wonder if you guys recognize. It's related to this one, but it's not the same. What's the log law you can see, Daniel? Uh, log A minus log, minus log B equals log A of B. Okay, fantastic. So when you've got a minus sign here, this doesn't become multiplication, it's the opposite of that, which is division, okay? Now this is just a sneaky curveball I threw right in here, because this here, as you can see the log law stated, it's not exactly the same, like see how these are identical? But these are not, what's the difference? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the reciprocal, yeah? So there's actually one final log law, which I'd love you all to jot down with me, that's related to these two, but it kind of gets at this one in here, right? See that minus sign, that minus sign? This, you can rewrite as log base 10, one breath, two fifths to the power of negative one. Do you see that, right? It's still a fraction, but I've flipped it upside down with this negative index. Now, if you recall, and you saw it here in this example, one of the things you can do with logs is that index up there, it can sort of jump out the front, like so. So it's the same as minus log, base 10 of 2 fifths, which you already worked out. So that's why this is the minus of, well the negative rather, of this. You see why they're the same magnitude, but opposite in sign. You okay with that? All right, fantastic. So you can rule that off, and like I said, not that many prizes for guessing what the missing word is in today's heading. It's differentiating logarithmic functions, okay? Now, I've said this enough times, even in our few lessons together, that hopefully you can repeat it back to me, right? Why might we be looking at logarithms when we have just spent a whole bunch of lessons talking about exponentials? What's the connection between them? Yeah, go ahead. It's, it's the same deal, just like looked at the in reverse. It's why you've got like multiplication and division, right? They're opposites to each other. So that's why it's a very natural next step to go to these based on our time with exponentials, okay? So here's what I want us to think about. Uh, and maybe you can draw underneath here for me a couple of axes that we can draw a graph on. Okay, they don't have to be massive. There won't be a lot of detail on them. But the first one's gonna look like this. And then the second one's gonna look like this. You're used to having a Cartesian plane that's got all the quadrants on it, but we're just gonna draw 
the top half of the graph for this one and the right hand half of the graph for this one and you will see why in a second. To understand differentiating logarithmic functions, I want to take you back to the first time, it was last year, right? So that's why I'm trying to review this, that you were differentiating exponential functions, right? Now on your first graph, and this is why it's just the top half, right? On your first graph, I'd love you to draw me a nice rough and ready exponential function, okay? So it should look something like that, okay? Now, on this exponential function, I haven't told you which exponential function is. It could be e to the x, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, doesn't really matter. What I want you to think about is, what does the picture, what does the graph tell you about the derivative of that graph? Uh, what I'm trying to get here, this is so important actually, I'm going to write it down. What I'm trying to get at here is that when you differentiate something, this is not just, where am I going to fit it? Uh, here will do. It's not just an algebraic or a symbolic process. It's not just like rearranging the algebra and the different symbols so you get another answer out. Differentiation is also, it's a visual process, or you can think of it as a, as a geometric process. If you look at the shape of something, you can understand its derivative. So have a look. What can you tell me? I mean, I know you know what the answer is, but tell me something about the derivative of this graph, some quality, not, not like symbols. Tell me some feature that it has. Daniel, you've given me so many good answers today. I'm going to hit pause on you. Thank you. Someone else want to throw in an idea? Can anyone tell me? Yeah, Seb. It's a tangent. What do you mean by it's a tangent? What are you getting at? It's a straight line at a point. Okay, so I can draw any point along here, right? I could pick a point like say here and I can draw a tangent, yeah? Now I want to focus on this idea, right? No matter which tangent I draw, pick a point here. In fact, maybe you want to put some of these tangents on with me, right? Pick a spot like that one. I'm guessing the tangent looks like that. Draw another tangent on, any way you like. How about here? We don't want to crowd them out too much. I reckon I've got enough space in my diagram to fit one more. Chuck one right up there. All of these tangents share something in common. Do you see, even though they're differing amounts, every one is increasing in gradient. Do you see that? They're all going upwards. And what that corresponds to is that this graph, let's call it e to the x, it's always increasing, always increasing, right? From left to right, the bigger you go, the steeper it gets, okay? In other words, this is what tells us, uh, I need another color. And um, this is what tells us that the gradient function of this exponential is very much like an exponential itself, like so. The gradient starts off really small. Do you see that? It's really shallow over here. And then it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, just like an exponential, okay? So if this is what's happening here, I want you to now think about, can we apply similar logic for one of these, okay? Now, before you draw it, can you just like motion with your hands? This is what an exponential function looks like. You could like do the curve in the air, right? Can you do that for me? I just want to get a read of how familiar you guys are with a logarithmic function. Can you do one in the air in front of you? I want to see what kind of shape you're tracing out. Yeah, okay, not bad. All right, fantastic. Can you draw one on this right-hand graph for me? Exponentials of logs are really nice to draw. You're just like, wee, off we go, and it's pretty good, right? Now, I want to ask this same question that we asked of this geometrically, the exponential. I want to ask it about the log. What can you tell me about the gradient of that function? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so there's definitely, like, there's a clear relationship between these, right? And we do call them inverses. So this thing is going to have something to do with this. So I'm going to park that thought because we're going to come right back to it. Richard, did you want to give me another thought? The gradient, say that one more time just so everyone can catch it. The gradient is constantly decreasing. Now that's so important. I think actually we should write it and I'm going to illustrate it with um, the same way we did before. So the gradient, jot this down with me, is constantly decreasing. Now I'm just going to put, um, put the word constantly in quote marks for me because um, in maths, you guys know, sometimes words have very technical meanings, right? The word constant means something very specific in maths that I think I see what you're getting at, but it's like, sort of. I wonder if you guys can help me in a second to work out a, a more technically accurate word. But I like the idea. Let's have a look. 
If I pull the same trick I did, Seb suggested we look at some tangents, right? I'm going to do the same thing over here. Draw some tangents with me, right? So here's a tangent. It's something like that. And you're happy with that? Looks okay. You, you can do a better job using your ruler. Here's another tangent. And I'll fit one more. Okay. Now, Rishi's comment about the gradient decreasing is that this is like steep. This is kind of like medium, I guess. And this is quite shallow. So this tells you the gradient's getting less and less and less. Is the gradient ever negative? What would a gradient that's negative actually look like on the graph? It would have to start going down, wouldn't it, right? Which on this graph would be the sort of equivalent of like curling back on itself. It's not going to ever do that, right? So it's constantly decreasing. And the other thing we note is it's always positive. Oops. Now, I'm not talking about the graph itself. Look, this part of the graph is negative. I'm talking about the gradient of the graph. It's always positive. Maybe I should write that gradient. So I'm going to give you a second to think about this, right? On your page, just like see how I drew this red graph where I'm like, oh, that one is the gradient. I'd like you, if you don't have enough color, that's okay. Just use whatever you have available. Just in the same way that I put the graph and its gradient together, with this graph, can you also put what you think the gradient looks like on top of this? So both graphs sort of coexist a bit like this, okay? Some of you might know the answer already, good for you. But for the rest of us, I'm trying to develop your visual intuition before we prove it with the symbols. Can you take a second to do that? And I'll come around and have a quick look.